European Ultimate Championship Finals in Bruges, Belgium. I am Hannah Penderbury, delighted to be joined on this live stream by the one and only Ali Thomas. And we have Yaka taking the field in front of us on offense, getting us underway against Kuss of Italy. They've just seen their male counterparts not succeed against the likes of Clapham, but an early error from Yaka is going to give the disc to Shout Steelein. Chesky, far side, finds Seibert. Seibert's going to open up the arm. It is a massive arcing one, just about kept in. And is that a score just over the line? Looks a bit too close to call from here, but it looks like the players will discuss it on the field. Got a Yaka player calling the goal. Yeah, Chassigno puts the signal and hits a break straight out of the blocks for the Italians. So pretty decisive opening statement from Cusp there, and you can see they're really fired up. Oh, as they well should be. The defending champions here through the tournament had a slightly trickier path into this women's final. How have they gone so far through the tournament, these two teams? So Yaka have been looking pretty dominant. They've capped everybody at 15, haven't had any games where they have not scored 15 goals. Um, their closest game, I believe, was 15-9 um, earlier in the tournament. Cusp struggled a little bit more. They've had matchups in worse conditions and on worse fields. Um, so that potentially leading to uh, slightly tighter score lines, the weather and the conditions a bit of a leveler. They had to play Valkyria twice, were able to prevail twice. Um, I think the most uh, challenging of their games. Um, so Yaka probably the favorites coming in, uh, but Cusp showing that they're definitely not uh, going to go quietly. So Yaka's O-line here now needing a hold if they're going to prevent the Italians from taking this away. As I say, defending their European title in the black shirts as we see Mondio taking down under traffic. Far side being marked. I look back. Anna Chesky from a far ball. Can't quite see the number. And Paul Bus opens up the arm. The young player from the Netherlands finds another of the international collective for the Yakitos in Esbringel. That is the kind of decisive play that Yaka have been throwing all tournament. They have the deep cutters, they have the handlers. There are certain handlers who really, really love to look long. Um, this is uh, the number 18 Mondio, especially has a, a right arm on her. So um, Cusp are gonna have to we'll figure out a strategy to lock that down early on. Otherwise Yaka are gonna be putting point after point on the board. Yes, indeed, the Eurostar, the number 18 captain for this Yaka side, used to be one of the only hand cannons for this Yaka squad. And as we said briefly, they've had a couple of friends come along, Yaka being a very fun club to play with, attracting talent from both sides of the Atlantic. But those players perhaps helping them in previous years to finally break into the top set here in the women's division will be bring you a reef cap though of the brief history of these two teams as we watch Frangipani center of the field coming out for the first time on offense our cusp Greta Meliga there Just, they'll isolate her a lot in space if she's having a good day the Italians are going to be storming perhaps ahead in the early stages here Scazzieri Irene looks around has to put a chuck in and hope. Meliga, though, far side, the tall Italian reels it in, and that is the second point for Cusp. 2 1. So I would say the first 90% of that looked very comfortable, working under very nicely, getting really lovely separation from their defenders. That last throw, slightly dicier, um, but if it gets in the goal, it gets in the goal. So as Hani mentioned, Yaka, uh, this is the furthest they have ever made it in a European Ultimate Championship. Uh, they have two bronze medals to their name, uh, but they have never made it to a final. And what happened the last time these two met up? Because that was back in 2019. Um, so in 2019, they were in the bronze medal match. Um, Cusp lost 
on Universe. Um, oh, they won on Universe in 2019. So, sorry, yeah, is your... We're, we're cu currently reading through our notes that I've handwritten <laughs> and, and Ali's, Ali's working with. So, last time these two teams met up on the fields in Caole, Venice, the home advantage perhaps going to the Italians. So, Yaka lost in the semi final 13 12 on sudden death, the last European Championship final before the pandemic 13 12. So, the Yaka players wanting to go on the charge. Paolo Bass on the end of a hunt rather than the beginning. Unusual to see that happen. And a pick downfield is going to give us a brief stoppage. Apologies for misreading your notes there, honey. That's OK. That's why uh, <laughs> right, there's two of us. <laughs> it's OK. We're, in, uh, we're well into the depth of this tournament as commentators. It's been a, a bit of a grind here out on the fields, but we are delighted to be doing so. Would we be rather anywhere else? Absolutely not, as we see a cusp overthrow on the far sideline. It's an uncharacteristic error from cusp. They have been fairly on target with most of their deep throws. Uh, Inclement conditions accepted, and it is very still here in Bruges, and the rain has finally stopped. So, the Cusp error giving the Yaka offensive line the disc back. Bringel, the Portuguese contingent for this Yaka side. Happy belated birthday to her sister. Felipe, oh, and my goodness, that is a beautiful backhand. The target in the end zone is found. The number 96, Olga Chinini. She's been such a reliable deep cutter for Yaka so far this tournament. And as I said earlier, Yaka really, really loved their deep game. They had uh, some struggles against teams who had some zones that really shut it down very effectively. Um, so I would very much like to see Cusp bringing out something to try and clamp down on those deep throws. Beautiful sailing backhand the first time round, trying to hit Paula Bass, perhaps getting available in the deep space because, as we say, Paula, not the biggest person to throw the hucks to, but certainly enjoys opening up the arm herself. And just lovely, catches it perfectly in stride. It's a perfect height and just the right angle that the defender has nary a chance. Well, Rasta there, as she's known. Such a wonderful player and a wonderful person. I think probably would have won the Miss Congeniality Award for Eurostars 2019. And that would not have been an easy award to win. There were lots of very lovely people on that team. Yep, and a successful campaign also. Although Czeski, the number 31, I believe it was, was actually playing for the team that took the only defeat against that 2019 Eurostars tour in Raleigh. Mm. Phoenix, they had to have a Eurostar to beat the Eurostars. <laughs> and a huge ripper from the captain, Francesca Sorrenti. Sorry, not the captain, that's uh, Pancotti, <laughs> number 11 that's the captain for this Cruz side, alongside Laura Farolfi, who is not on the field. She t broke her foot a couple of weeks ago in training. You might be able to see her on a wide shot. She is on crutches in the background, so still very much here. Uh, but not contributing on the field. There was a uh, good joke going around. The, we're staying in the same hostel as the Italians. They look pretty confident and happy at breakfast, just bubbling around, glad to be here again in the final. But uh, Farolfi was saying she should be given a BB gun so she can shoot her players when they're not doing exactly as she says. <laughs> not sure what the... Uh ethical standards I'd have to say about that about coaching in France but uh, who knows <laughs> well either way Yakut now looking for their next point there's a pick up field as we say ciao or should we say bonjour bonsoir bon mat what is it is there a good afternoon I forget in French l'après-midi uh. yeah but it's not really a good afternoon thing. It's not really a saying. Anyway, bonjour okay. to the Yakitos and the Yak Americans. Let us know if you're on board for this women's final stream. You can get in touch with us via the comments. Make sure you hit that subscribe, like, and notification noti oh, bell notifications. 
Nice pressure on the defensive handler set. And a big huck again. It's going to be a game of throws, perhaps, this match. And just about sails out of bounds. Yeah, just a bit too much. Io on that made it tail far too much to the right. It looked good when it came out, but uh, not quite good enough. De Laval, the intended target, but unable to capitalize. But a slow start for the Italians on this second asking. Oh, it is a beautiful flick, but Fenix in the air and oh. she's going to snatch that out of the sky as she tends to do. I love the scuba fake there, Robin. <laughs> Pan of this. And she's become such a key part. This is her fourth year with the Yaka team. And just enough bubble, but that's a nasty come down. And you can see the look on the face. That's so sad to see. It is much better, Ali, playing on these AstroTurf fields than it is on the slippery mess of the rest of the site in Bruges. We've had a lot of the games for the lower down divisions cancelled outright when we saw the storm rolling in yesterday. But you do get curious injuries on rubber crumb occasionally, and that unfortunately looks like it's one of them. I think we may well need uh, the paramedics to come over. I think I think it's the knee that I saw her holding. Um. Well, the Italians did bring their own physio with them. I saw them getting some uh, pre-game massages as we'll have a look at that beautiful arcing flick that Fennig just took down. Such a dangerous deep threat. Um, and some applause for the Chris player as she manages to get herself off the pitch. By virtue of the orange neck here, I think that might be a Scherzieri coming off, which is devastating. The two Scherzieri sisters so pivotal for this shout side, and we've seen them be really unfortunate with injuries. We've already talked about Farolfi, but I think they were intending on bringing 28 players, but they've only brought 21 over the past couple of weeks. They've just been so unfortunate. So. Is it just going to be that thing that takes a bit of the uh, chunk out of the mental composure for Cusp? I know Yaka have brought their own psycholo psychology coach. Wow. Wow, indeed. Is that is that a coach who also happens to know something about psychology, or is that an individual? No, they have an individual who is just helping them figure out their mental game. That's some, that's some real sports stuff. Oh, absolutely. There is a, it's becoming a growing sort of field of study for ultimate players as we see Meliga going to ground but not able to come up with the goods for the score. But it'd be nice to see this point finish so we can shake off the injury we saw but a few moments ago. Yes, and uh, for the first few passes uh, after that stoppage, Cusp still looking very strong. But it certainly can take a toll when you see one of your teammates injured and you have that concern niggling in the back of your mind. We can confirm it is indeed Arena Scazzieri that's going to be looked at on the side. And hopefully it's just a bit of a jar, one of those nervy, pain th painy things, but um, nothing too long term. Maybe see her back on the field later. But they do have a very deep squad as we see Frangipani take it out of the sky and immediately pop it into the zone. And that is a hold for the Italians. So uh, a bit of a roller coaster of emotion that point, um, but Cusp able to clinch the goal after capitalising on a short field turn by Yaka. So just a little bit of background on these teams as the next point winds up. Um, Yaka have faced Cusp twice um, in the years from 2017 to 2019. As we mentioned in 2019, um, they lost in the semi. In 2018, Yaka were not actually here. Um, they were representing at the World Ultimate Club Championships that year, so they decided to focus on that one tournament for the summer. In 2017, they beat uh, Cusp for the bronze medal. That is one of two bronze medals um, that this French side has. Cusp 
working backwards, obviously we know they are the current champions beating Cosmic Girls in the final. In 2018, the year that Yaka was not here, um, they took their first championship beating Iceni. And in 2017, um, they were fourth, as we mentioned, losing to Yaka. So both teams have a bit of a history of matching up against each other. Obviously, rosters have changed a bit in the intervening years, but they are not strangers to each other's style of play. As a huge huck goes up. Paola Bus underneath it, playing through a stress fracture in her foot. But it doesn't look like there's any difference being made by that. How can players with literal broken bones be so dominant on the field? It's not fair. It's just the Paula <laughs> Bass way. So, Yaka <laughs> Punch in another score. They are trailing a break against this Cusp Shout team that had the early advantage, but nice to see both <laughs> a clean hold, I think that is. Yes, and a quick one too. Blingel, as you say, the Euro start from 2019 and I think 2018 pulling double duty. Certainly more than one cap. Can't remember which year, but maybe you can tell us in the comments. Finding Bass, who wasn't there on the 2018 squad, but was in 18. As you say, these are some of the greatest female athletes in the whole of the European continent. And dare say the world. Oh, absolutely. Do you see the look there on Paul the Bass's face? She's happy with that one. I'm pretty happy as well. Hopefully we get this one going the full 15 or at least the full 90 minutes that will be playtime here on the fields in Bruges. Oh, nice big mid there, making sure we're keeping the disc alive. It looks like Bonfante on the far side. Oh, nice one around, but that's oh. going to be a miscue. Thank God he tries to chase it down, but it's not to be. Cusp in there, Semi had quite a few of those breaks, both Io and Round that sailed over the head of the intended receiver. Some were scooped up, some were not. So a chance here for Yaka to take a break back. Fennig far sideline's gonna open up a huge hoof of a backhand, but picked off by the defense. That's Frangipani underneath it. I mean, some of these hucks, you think they're going to come out perfect and then just at the last second a player is able to come up and just snaffle them away but Fennig more than capable of putting pinpoint hucks. Do you think a little bit of nerves maybe at this point still? I think to be honest it's more the fact that we know what Robin wants to do and the Cusp lines do have a lot of height. <laughs> As we see Greta Meliga there, one of the favoured targets again. Look at the height difference between her and her matchup. So yeah, it's a tall squad. So anything that sits and floats and hangs and there's going to be a sky ball, the Italians are probably going to come out on top. Northern Italians uh, do not share that same reputation as a lot of Southern Italians do of being uh, short. Generally, the further north you go in Italy, the, the taller the average height is. So Yaka starting to move the disc up the field now. Oh, huge layout. Oh, easy score. Very <laughs> nice. Very nice. <laughs> Fennig does what Fennig does best. And that's a nice high backhand. Sinks it in and eventually they do get there. Yaka with the break back. We are on serve after that early error gave Cusp an advantage. So that means, of course, if these two Titan clubs in the women's division just trade out, it will go to Yaka by virtue of having won the toss. I, I can't imagine that will happen, but anything is possible. Absolutely anything oh is no, possible. Oh, no, I could 100% imagine that happening. We're going to have breaks. We're going to have some spice. We had get another look at that frangipane block. Nice. Kiki getting a great read on that. Looks like she could have caught that. <laughs> and as we all know, you've got to catch your Ds. I'll just look at that. One of the things that I find so impressive about Fennec, obviously she has an incredible ability to read the disc, to be just such a good shepherd at the back of a zone, but it's more the instinctive way with which she throws. It's almost like she knows what's going to happen on the pitch before it happens, and therefore she doesn't have to have any hesitation when she's throwing the next pass. But no hesitation there between the backhandless set as we see Seibert putting it up. 
the Austrian inside shot, but that's going to be a little bit too much mustard on. And Pancotti with the looks, miscue. Looks like she tried to eagle catch that and it just slipped down and straight onto the floor. So, Yaka, can they generate a little bit of a run here? Mondio with the disc. Bas having to scoop low, but that's thrown straight into the turf. What happened, Rasta? Seibert into Frangipani. Oh, a low one. Is that a chesky grab on the far side? Yes, it is still playing in her waterproof uh -huh. trousers, even though the sun is now making its first appearance here in Bruges. It's because it's the women's final, Ali. Got to gotta give the women's final some love. Even the weather knows that. The sun's like, mixed. Oh, yeah, rain, you can have that. <laughs> Open. Ah, cloud, a bit more rain, sure. Women's final. Wall to wall sunshine, right? <laughs> Maybe a slight <laughs> exaggeration. <laughs> oh, we wish. It's been a soggy, soggy tournament. Um, but it's great to be back. We wouldn't have it any other way. As you can see on the far sideline, the body language of the spectators is that, yeah, the sun might have poked its head through, but it's still very cold. Looking pretty hot, though, is Ines Bringel as she puts a release valve out into space for Elise Becquet. Le Bon in the middle, Nanu. Back to Bringel. When she first was playing with this Yakasai Bringel, in fact, was I think she was playing, oh my goodness, as my brain tries to remember stuff, Chesky goes big and then gets a big piece of Aline Mondio. I think calls the foul on herself. Absolutely, just one of those things of getting tangled in the centre of the field. But I think Ines Bringel actually in tw the 2019 campaign, she was playing for Cosmic Girls, so nice to see her coming across mm. and playing for Yaka. Cheeky switch. Cybert. Pops across, Frangipane. Pankasi with the lethal inside. This time, no errors. Melega opens up the arm around. Zaiba, oh my goodness. That's Bus trying to get the block, puts enough pressure. I think that's Diaz. And we've seen it before in this game now, where Kuzp try and take on a bladey break throw, and it's just not on target. So Yaka have another chance after several turns in this point. Five in total. And Mondio will get us underway again. Becke, whose brother we had on our earlier stream game for the Yaka side, giving us all the facts, all the facts. If you want to have an in-depth knowledge of the Yaka side, do watch that stream game back. It's available for you free forever on YouTube. Becke just about getting it over the top, sneaking it over Pancotti. Some slightly risky biscuits. Oh, and you see Bringel track that one down. Good mental focus and acuity. But of course, this Yaka side is very deep, very large roster. These players are pretty fresh for this four-day tournament. And there's an inside to Bringel, and it's a goal for Yaka and another break. That was an excellent, excellent cut from Bringel and really helped out that Yaka uh, side because everything looked very static in the end zone. I mean, the players all set up in formation very nicely, but it looked like no one was really sure where the cut was going to come from. But as we saw, Bringel is the one who, uh, who was looking to get the disc up the line. Um, and she does so admirably. Our uh, producer, Milan, is currently stood in the sunshine. In fact, Lorcan Murray's just fallen to his knees. He's so excited to see a bit of nicer weather after the miserable conditions we've been experiencing out here. But what a final this is turning out to be. We saw Cusp shout, see the error from Melega there. Her coming up against the Valkyria side, the very talented but rather short rostered Valkyria side on this field, but a few days ago, and both teams really struggled. It was Turnover City in that stream game. So delighted to have such nice scenes and look at these replays, Ali. Yeah, credit to our camera crew who'd been working incredibly hard all weekend to bring you these beautiful shots so we can watch them again in slow motion. You can see Mondial there going to ground somehow managing to pop up without any friction burns on her legs and then that lovely cut uh, from Bonjour. 
And you can see her hair tracking that disc. Her head is moving like it's on a swivel, just making sure that it's in her eye line still. Well, I have to say, Ines Blingel is all business. Absolutely. She has a great time out in the field, though you wouldn't necessarily see it from her facial expressions. She makes posterizing grabs. She is dominant on the field. But um, we'll talk a bunch about these two teams, both, as you say, established amongst the women's club scene. Of course, you've got a difference here. You've got Yaka, which is more of an established unit. It's a club that's just catering for women, obviously part of the Noisy Le Sec community, which has its male counterparts of Is No Good, but obviously the big brand of CUSB Cusp from La Bologna producing so many talented athletes. They have a representation at the championship finals in all three divisions. Yaka coming out with a zone. Well, you've got to try something to confuse this very handy cusp offense. Let's get Zerini. High grab. Nice work around the back here as we see him melt to match. Seems to have completely stifled, but there goes Chesky on the far sideline. Normally playing on the D-line for Kuss, but this is her paying some double duty, and there is the goal eventually. However, a travel is going to be called by Fennig. He's marching up Gaia Pancotti. Some of the Kuss players on the sideline having to uh, decelerate quickly and support their run onto the field to celebrate. Loving the uh, power plat look that Fennec has. Nice round to Seibert, who's, I believe this is her first appearance on Kuss, but we'll have to do some fact checking. The Austrian. Sean Colfer is nodding his head, covering this women's division for Ulti World, working super hard and jumping into our booth on the odd occasion. Got a great team here. Absolutely. So we see Chesky and Becke having a little chat. Oh, sorry, De Laval. So back in action, Chesky pops it up to Pancotti. She nearly didn't get that. Just, here's a disc for you in the face. And there's a disc for you in the end zone. It's a goal for Shout. Very similar to Yaka's last goal down that end zone. Quite a static stack, standing central. And then it's that dump cut getting free up the line. Just a cheeky little pass in. It's When it works, it works so well. And you can see there a lot of separation uh, from Gaia Pancotti, uh, sorry, that Gaia Pancotti gets. Uh, from her defender, able to make that clap catch very easily. And not just any defender, Ali, that is the one and only Robin Fennig. Indeed it is. Not an easy woman to get free from, up the line or anywhere. Although, to be honest, I feel like that's probably fair to say about all of the players on the field. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> as much as I'm fangirling over Robin, it is lovely to commentate on her games and... Uh, Nice to follow all of, well, not all of these athletes. I don't follow every single one of them on Instagram, but um, Robin does. So hello to Lily and Paul at home. I'm sure they'll be watching. Lily, the new pup. Have you, uh, have you been tempted by a lockdown pup? Well, we, we already have a dog, so uh, getting another one might have been slightly overkill. Ah, oh, woof, woof indeed. We've seen some excellent doggo action on the far sideline, although we seem to be missing them. They've uh, probably been taken out for some walkies, but some good collies earlier on some good dogs indeed not getting on the pitch thankfully and chasing any frisbees because that of course can be a risk sometimes as anyone who's practiced in a public field will know see see some hot pressure defense from cusp here cusp looks like they're running a little bit of a poachy poachy look polar bus playing on that stress fracture Oh, pops it through a sneaky, slicey break. Mondio with her own variant, nice and low. Gina pops it back. Has options available, but oh, chooses the high dish, and that is gorgeous. 
That is such an unusual is, is not strong enough a word, but that is not a throw you necessarily expect coming out at that angle, going to that area. But that is exactly the kind of throw that Mondio can perform in a high pressure situation near to the end zone. And Yaka look like they may be starting to pull away slowly but surely. Absolutely unconventional. I think is the word for that mm. release point and that angle. Let's have another look. She's looking, looking. Fakes the open side and she just flings that. It's not even necessarily that high of a release point, but she does it so fast, almost whips it round, unable to be collected. There's so much power in the wrist snap of Mondieu. Mm. Like, especially because, right? She released it, and I'm going to do this to you, Ali. All she right, released it like here. <laughs> so right in front of the face of the defender. Oh, no, no, no. But like, if she'd moved in just one inch, that would have been a face full of disc. <laughs> or, a, or a face full of elbow, possibly. It looked oh. like her arm was quite straight, oh, which gosh, is, you yeah. know, both, is, both are bad options. <laughs> this, of course, being why, I don't know actually if it's the WFDF rule set, but the UK Federation keeps having to send out emails. Please do not play your games in wristwear, such as Fitbits and watches, that are not covered by nice, soft, big sweatpants. Because I've seen someone take a big, full backhand huck to the face with a wristwatch. Mm. It was not great. But that was just good enough. The release valve, escape hatch, high throw as we see the Italians get forced into a throwaway from Giappone, the intended target, and immediately the response, but not quite there. A little bit of a winding. An injury call is signaled. All right, that looks to be Knudsen. Rika there coming across from the Danish side, although a connection to Fennec. Oh. She uh, actually played in Wisconsin for the Belladonna si side coming out of the University of, in Madison. Mm, shout out to any American fans who are watching presumably quite early in the morning, or if indeed you are watching this back to catch up on the action. Oh, and thank you, Matt's in the comments. Cybert has three nationalities, but none of them are Austrian. There we go. Getting myself confused, but a no confusion here from the cusp side as they charge down the field. Sorrenti looking around frantically for options, eventually finds Cybert. There'll be a pick called in the stack. You can see Davide Marie walking across our commentary booth here. Davide Mori. <laughs> Ciao, Vela. Recently married. Congratulations, if you're watching this back, Davide. <laughs> auguri, tanti auguri. And uh, yeah, and a shout out to uh, some Italians that might know Ali, the lovely Ali. Yes, anybody from the uh, AUT uh, in Torino. I know they're all at Paga now, um, doing not too badly. Um, so, ciao ragazzi, see you soon. Oh, and that is a nice bid just to make sure on the far side of the field, the number 20, Celia Scalerini. So not the cleanest hold for shout, but a hold <laughs> is a hold. I th yeah, I think not the cleanest is probably a bit of an understatement, but mm. it's good to see this game being nice and close. We would expect nothing less from teams of this caliber vying for the title of the best women's team in Europe. Because keep confusing me, they look like they're standing in a huddle like they've just called a timeout as opposed to Yaka who are all kneeling down helpfully. <laughs> well, talking about this women's division more generally, Ali, these two are the largest rosters, I'm pretty sure, by a fairly significant margin. Kusp has a couple more hands at the tiller than the Yaka side does. But hats off to Valkyria, one of the smallest rosters here, who went really deep into the bracket after being quite well coming in quite a lowly scene mm. the swedes coming out of nowhere with some help from their lithuanian friends 
watching them was super fun when the conditions were good. When the conditions were good, they had an incredible indoorsy style, lots of hammers and blades and spice. But having to play in the conditions I saw them play in, it was just dreadful for all involved, I think. Well, they did seem to be playing a lot better when they just said, well, you know, well, goodness gracious me, we're a couple of points down. We might as well play outdoors, indoors mm. anyway. And uh, they looked pretty good and that actually gave them some confidence. But we'll have to check them out at a later time because right now we're seeing another CUSPS zone. These two teams haven't had the pleasure of facing up against each other, but we did see CUSPS zone actually against that Valkyria side. One has to think that the throwing chops on Yaka are probably going to be pretty good. We, I say, already seen some controversial, no, controversial un unconventional discs out of the hand of Montieu, as we see on the far side, Audrey Chant. Yaka had a lot of practice playing against Love. The women's team from Belgium threw his own for pretty much the whole quarterfinal. And Yaka struggled with it at first, so he managed to get those reps in. When talking of close games for Yaka, they've pretty much rolled the pack here that oh. they've played. And with throws like that, rinsing through the zone, you can easily see why. Pop back into the hands every third pass, of course. Rasta, Limon Dio, Beke side. And I think that might be a uh, Frisbee's hat she's donning there. <laughs> a little bit of support for the local team. Oh, and the, and the tournament organizers here, massive hats off to the Frisbee's crew. The Barbies, the Frisbees, running around, making this happen, adjusting the schedule due to these horrendous conditions early in the tournament. That's a high stall and a stall out for Cusp. As we chat around, but Richon's going to have a few things to say about it. So it looks like uh, another perspective being offered by Yaka. But since the throw is a turnover anyway, it should stand. Unless, unless a foul is being called. Uh, Richon was, uh, she's, she's sort of putting her hands together. Sometimes the uh, foul signals are not entirely uniform across teams, across players. It is a contested foul. So it should be coming in maximum stalling six. Well, stalling seven. So oh no, starting, eight. Starting eight. stalling eight. So you start with the eight. But that would have been for a contested stall out, not a contested foul. Mm, true. Inappropriate hand signals. Oh. Mm. oh. Bass looks like she has an opinion. Just from her body language, she looks like she has an opinion. This, this is my favorite when you get the like the action replay. But uh, it's going to be uh, retracted. Pancotti goes, OK, fair enough. Let's just get on with the playing. And Bass with the disc near sideline. Scaglierini on the mark, and that's going to be a throw into traffic. Lawley. Oh, and that is a ripper, but I think that might fade just too far out of bounds. Can she make a play on it? No, she cannot. Mm. A error from Chesky getting a little bit hot-headed after all those stoppages, perhaps. Looks like uh, Cusper immediately going to set up their zone. So a little bit of huck and D perhaps happening in this uh, women's final. They have just got a turn from Yaka and put a lot of pressure on them. So clearly they have faith that their zone can continue to get these turns. And some love in the comments from Daniela Rodriguez Nassar, an ex Yaka player. Well, probably still considered part of the Yaka unit. If she wanted to come back, I'm sure they'd have her. But hello to you, Daniela. We do miss seeing you on the field. The connection between yourself and Mondio was so iconic. But now making new friends, making new connections with Paula Bass is found on the sideline. And that is such a casual throw, tipped away easily by the defense. Yeah, I'm not even really sure. It looked like the angle was just a little bit wrong. Um, or maybe she didn't see the uh, the cursed player, but yeah, uncharacteristic from Bass. Well, I think that is a little bit on Bass brand. She's a, she's feisty, but weirdly casual on occasion as Paula Bass. Like she gets into the angry cave sometimes, mm. but like, do you know what I mean? She's got that kind of like, yeah, I'm just going to slip in here. Unnoticed, casual, just wang it that way, grab it this way. She has massive hops for a player of her stature, it has to be said. Got Although it, at the it. moment, it's got to be painful as it gets coming down on yeah. that stress fractured foot. I imagine she is um, doped up to the eyeballs on ibuprofen. 
<laughs> and doped up to the eyeballs. Indeed, maybe she's even co-medicating. That's mm. when you know it's bad. It's when you've got a little bit of maybe a little bit of codeine in your system as well as an anti-inflammatory yeah. for the real, the real, <laughs> the real painful ones. But of course, we don't condone playing through injuries. No, we don't. No, However, we don't. when it's a gold medal on the line and you know you're about to start your off-season for outdoors, mm -hmm. sometimes it's tempting. So we had a cusp timeout on their end zone line here. I think just from just anecdotally, this is the place where I've seen most teams turn over immediately outside of a timeout. You take the timeout, you have the whole pitch looking at you, and then there's a turn and a quick score. So I hope that's uh, not what we're going to see for cusp because of course we want to see the game uh, very tight and very exciting. But it has happened. I've seen it happen. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so. Ali Thomas with the call for a turnout. <laughs> and uh, I've got my socks on today. Mm -hmm. I've got my, my commentary socks that I bought in Heidelberg. And some of the, uh, the Italians were playing in that tournament. They're so young. I think that's probably one of the actually understated advance, well, differences, sorry, mm -hmm. between these two teams. Yaka, I probably would say a little bit more mature, more seasoned as a playing outfit. So maybe that will assist them in terms of the latter stages of this game. Then again, last time these two teams met when it was on home soil, so you'll in Gaole in that semi-final, it was the Italians, the youngsters who came out in front as we see Czeski putting a beautiful inside. Look at that, and Diaz rips it, but that is gonna be bad. Straight into the floor alley. I don't think we can quite count that as a as a, a turnout. No, it, they did they did generate some very nice offense, and then mm. just you know those moments. I don't know. You, you're you're a handler, right? That's such a good question, honey. We're not sure <laughs> what we are how we identify. I identify as a handler. That moment when you get excited, and you're like, "Yep, I got that," and then you're just like, your your hand just says no. I think mm. that was probably one of the moments for yes. Diaz there especially since the ground is still very wet. We have seen some players laying out and some water splashing around them as they land. So if there's a turnover, you know, you're picking up a static disc, it can be just that little bit damp, that little bit harder to get a grip on to throw long. Although at least today the jerseys are dry enough that if you try and <laughs> wipe the disc, mm. it's going to be effective. At the, uh, the latter stages of yesterday, when we saw Salisbury's best putty to get themselves into the mix final, I swear it was actually they were picking up the edge of their shirt and making the disc even more wet. Mm. It's probably just habit at that point. Oh, <laughs> big pressure there on the hand set. This is great smother cover containment defense from Cusp. Mondio looking around us. Everybody pretty static. It'd be nice to see them spread this one wide and far. Just moving their arms out the way. Tireless marking. Oh, and a cheeky one over the top to Nanu. Bas now. However, the pack a little bit behind, not able to continue all the way. Just the half a field. Oh, saucy inside break catches Aline sleeping. And Lolly on the far side. Zips it and Pancotti is going to put another blade and going to the knees, but that is suspiciously open in the end zone. Yeah, you really can't afford to be making miscommunications uh, at this level, that near the end zone. And that cusp zone was really, really, as you said, smothering. And just from looking at the Yaka offense, it looked like they were doing a great job of stretching it deep but they were also quite smushed in the middle of the pitch, so not stretching it very wide. So we'll just see on the replay this beautiful flow from Shout. Getting it off onto a tight space up the line, not an easy throw to execute, and then just launching deep, going to her knees to collect it safely. It's an interesting one for the defense here, Ali, because as you say, they squeezed it down that far side. Perhaps the defenders thought that wasn't going to come off and the Italians weren't going to execute. Mm. Even though it was a hard ask on that final pass, if I was on the sideline, if I was a Yaka player, 
I would be screaming at my teammates. What on earth are you doing letting them softly sagging into that end zone when you were so close? Because it's, it's so easy to throw that single pass. Obviously, not the best execution. It was a very, very bladey flick. But when you're within that distance, you have to really have your, your head switched on, especially with so many players ready to come and give you respite if you leave everything out here on the field. So we'll see the shout zone again. Definitely don't fault that decision considering how effective it was last time. Absolutely. And that break for the Italians have put us back on serve. Yakka, of course, started on offense and immediately were broken. Then he looks around, takes the easy shot. Bit of a discussion between Fennig and Pancotti. Sorry, that's not Pancotti. Indeed, this is not. I think that is the um, number. Oh, hold on. Looks like an eight for my bet. A oh, 51. Of course, yes. That's a uh, Rabagli. Or Rabagli. Rabaglia. That's the budget. <laughs> Ali, of course, having moved to Italy recently, is much better at the Italian pronunciations than I, so I shall defer to her better knowledge. Well, I'm sure I'm, I'm getting it slightly more right, but still probably not entirely right. It's a tricky one to wrap your tongue around sometimes. So, the cusp zone continues to stifle this Yaka offense. Oh, a high risky biscuit over the top. That's exactly what they wanted Ooh. to bait. And off to the races go Cusp. Cheski, Pancotti, back to Cheski. This is so important. If they can get this break, they're going to put themselves out in front once more. Loli. Oh, and it's going to be asked of Cheski once again, but not going to happen this time. It's these breaks, it's these big, blady breaks. They are just not working out. Well, defensive player of the year back in 2019, Anna Czeski, not able to come up with the goods on offense. I wonder if we'll see her at some point take off her waterproof trousers. Maybe, maybe if it comes to universe point. Business time, although they will keep her thighs safe from a horrible turf burn when she gets her lovely layouts. So you see, again, the hand, the set of Yaka, unable to really gain much yards. Happy to take the little conservative dink passes, but of course, as any statistician knows, the more passes you throw, it changes the dynamics so much of the nature. Because also, Ali, just as a, as a side point, mm. one of the things I like about this Cubstone and the kind of, you know, almost passive way it's allowing those slightly negative and horizontal passes is that it's just trying to keep the Yaka O-line out on the field for as long as humanly possible. Mm. If you can make those offensive points longer, you're going to tire out your opposition. And that can be the difference between these two very well-matched teams in the end. That is very true. And especially uh, when the game is going to go all the way to these 90 minutes, as the current scoreline would indicate, and just from what we've seen would indicate, that little bit of extra juice in the legs makes a lot of difference. I like this switch now from Yaka to actually put more players in the uh, deeper part of the field. When they have the four clustered around the disc, it's not really giving them many options. It's allowing the deeps in the zone. You've got Cheski, you've got Cyber on the far side. Just trying to get my eyes on the number. Can't quite see it. Might be a sketchy area over there. Although she's normally on their O-line, so probably not. But uh, they're almost able to just person match. And that's one of the things you want to do in a zone is to find the person isolated in the space and maybe try and throw it over the top because there's very little wind right now. I say that, I can see the Eurodisc flags. There is a little bit, but it's not moving the trees as much as it was before. Mm. And there we see a little bit of movement through, but again, oh, everyone oh. quite short. Robin Fennick, oh, it nearly worked, you know? She, I think, was just focusing on keeping her feet in, which she managed to do, but she could not manage to keep her hands on the disc. I'll tell you what, though, highlight play for sure, if that had come off. I think that's still, still almost a highlight play. 
Oh, there we go. <laughs> Robin Venick says, I'm sorry about that slightly high disc. Hold on, just let me go get it back for you. <laughs> She's considerate like that. She's a nice gal, what can we say? The uh, Dragon Thrust, former mixed player, now coming to this European women's division. So nice to have her across. It was looking like it might not happen with the various quarantine and vaccine. Well, fully vaccinated since February, she told me earlier this week. But um, nice to have her with us. But at the moment, there seem to be some uh, Frisbee antibodies, although as we now go towards Chassigno, pops it back into Della Valle. Alexia Chassigno playing for the French national team many times, well decorated individual. And of course, back in the last contingent of the French women's national team, they played the bracket, so they played the schedule very, very well in Cure. I see. They, they went <laughs> pretty uh, high up the rankings off of a, um, some, some called it controversial, I just call it smart. <laughs> win the games you need to win to know the schedule format as we oh. see the French throw it out of bounds. Katharina Meissel there. Oh wait, you know, the confusion earlier about Austrians. So Meissel is the Austrian on the team ah, coming from Vienna, okay. currently living in Leuven the PhD student in linguistics. Oh, fun. I think she once jumped in in the booth with me, Ali. How did that go? Pretty well, she was very good. I can imagine. <laughs> so, Meisel, you know, maybe one day when you retire, you can come into our booth as we see Cheski with the grab, sliding on her knees, just shy of the goal line. What a <laughs> read from the Italian. An excellent. Oh, well, excellent defense up until that point from Yaka, but just a, a, a millimeters pass um, being, so this will give Kusp their another break um, and their first lead in this game. Well, their, their second lead. Sorry, they, yes. They put themselves a nose in front. They came out of the blocks firing on all cylinders, caused the confusion converted cleanly the defensive point. But that, well, in the stage of this game, those two breaks, Ali, were so hard mm. for. Three turnovers for Yaka. So on the third try, Kuz finally managed to put it in for both of those. So we're really getting into a uh, blow for blow situation. So Yaka now, can they hold their composure as we see another slow-mo of that beautiful craft for Chesky. You can see how bouncy this rubber crumb is. Be uh, good to get an update at some point regards the stasis of Irene Scazzieri, mm. who we saw leave the field early stages with that nasty knee bash. She was on the sideline for a little bit. Someone had brought a blanket to cover her up. Um, but yes, th then I looked away and looked back and she has gone. So I assume she's being treated. Oh no, there she is. She was just moved, uh, moved slightly further back. So she looks like she's got her leg extended. You can see that Tokai boot peeking out of the blanket there one of the sponsors of this tournament and indeed of our stream the the money behind our servers for our commentary source so make sure we have the numbers and names of the players out in the field ripped out from ultimate central so if your ultimate central profile does not have your current jersey number present and correct and you're featuring on these streams please do consider going into your profile we know it's not always the easiest website to use, but please update your status with your correct jersey number. It makes our lives a lot easier. So Mondio making short work now of this group zone. They seem to have found some magique. As we see Bas faking around. Bringel coming through, nearly clattering. The Kuss defender. There is separation. Oh, it is the Russian for the goal. That is an absolutely delicious IO break from Mondio. And what allowed them, I think, to uh, get such flow against the cusp zone, I think is partly a little bit of practice, them getting used to it. And also, it looked like they were bringing back sort of three slash four handlers 
as opposed to uh, th just three strictly, which they had the last point. Um, so there was that continuation from upfield to get the swing, and then that person would stay there and allow the disc to be swung a lot faster. And we'll see this big pivot, big IO break. What a throw. Previously playing for the Wizards of Geneva, Olga Chinina. Now grabbing herself a score. So you can see the little celebration there. It's a jazzy uh, legging look. Are you a fan of this? Because there's a certain player in the UK scene who goes by Hazard, who looks like a traffic hazard, <laughs> frankly, <laughs> with the amount of Under Armour he wears. But are you a fan of the, the, the jazzy, tra uh, jazzy compression look? I think jazzy can encompass a lot of different looks. Okay, one that um, doesn't match isn't sort of, you know, co coherent with the strip that they're wearing. I think some people can carry it off. Some people can't. I will uh, not pass judgment on whether or not Hazard can. <laughs> um, I will say, however, that Courier Island have new leggings and they are gorgeous. Oh. Well, <laughs> we'll have to, you'll have to Google that one, I'm afraid, dear viewers, if you want to fit <laughs> sign that one, because I feel like it's not worth our time to chat about the designs as we see the designs that Yaka have to try and prevent Kursp uh, can they put their plan into action? Oh, yes, they cannot indeed. That is a beautiful sitter and hanger in stride. Keeps it well away from the trailing defender. And that is a goal for Italy. They are putting themselves in front and taking half. That huge bid from Bass unfortunately meant there was no force on the throw and able to just let rip all the time in the world and the space in the world um, to sit out into space. So we are still within one. Half has just been taken by the Italian side. We can see the Italian sideline clapping and chanting on their women um, after suffering uh, a bit of disappointment uh, with Clapham dispatching uh, Kusp in the men's final. But we're not here to talk about the men, we're here to talk about the women. Indeed, but we are going to take a brief break as the players do for a half time. We'll be back with more action after this highlights. We are a group of ultimate players, coaches and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Like and subscribe, Ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and, and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the Ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond. Welcome back here to the women's final, the XEUCF European Ultimate Championship Finals extended version. Here on the fields in Bruges, Belgium, the site of the famous Tom's Tourney, which unfortunately was paused, obviously, due to the old COVID-19. But <laughs> we're glad to be here. We drank the bar dry of Bruggesot yesterday evening having had the weather turn into a bit of a maelstrom and this women's division getting curiously chopped, cut after a scheduling nightmare, 17 team strong division. Yeah. How on earth do you prepare for that? Well, you do it by pools, power pools, and both these teams have rinsed their way through to the final, getting the detergent out of the cupboard, putting it in the machine, and having squeaky clean performances, almost perfect, going to the soft cap in all but one game. That tricky one here for the Italians versus Valkyria of Sweden. Hannah Pendery here in the commentary tent. We've got our flaps open. 
can't help it. They are indeed flat and they are indeed open so we can keep this game in our view. And this is Callahan country. Meliga looking a little bit lost for options after a fantastic pull penetrate through to Seibert, who has three nationalities, none of them are Austrian. But what are they? Can you guess in the comments? We'll find out. Fakes the backhand. But this is amazing smother cover defense from Yaka, and it just about gets in the head of Greta Meliger. We've seen her have so many drops on this field. It's so unusual, but when you put that much on one player's shoulders, having them as your isolated individual at the front of the zone, oh my goodness, a hammer wow. over the top to Robin Fennig and the dance celebration and kick and punch spike. Robin Fennig, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> What are two spikes for the price of one? And you could see Robin Fennig, as soon as that turn happened, gesturing to her team to just calm down, calm down, let's take it cool. And then doing, receiving exactly the opposite of a cool play, a stall one hammer. <laughs> we love to see it. In the comments, it's been talking about how um, perhaps dull it was watching Yaka play against the cusp zone that just back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. The small ball, patient, ultimate. Nice to see a little bit of spice mm. sprinkled on top as we're coming out in this second half. Absolutely, and overheads are so much harder to defend against, uh, potentially harder to execute as perfectly as your quote unquote regular throws. Um, I will say, Yaka reported to us that that zone they used for the first time on Friday. So they didn't use it at all on Thursday. They used it um, once or twice against uh, Love, who made short work of it, so they, they stopped playing it. But uh, it looks very good for something that uh, they have not practiced much um, the rest of the tournament. Well, this is a very drilled, very capable team. And they, uh, they are pretty intelligent as well. They think a lot, certainly think a lot about gender equity type issues. These uh, Italian ladies are such inspirational figures for female athletes around Europe in the way that they play, but also the way that they think and the way that they run. And we're gonna run that one down, <gasps> nearly gets the trailing edge. <sighs> Devastation though for the young Tatilia Scarrierini. Yeah, that looked like it was a couple of centimeters away from her fingers. An incredible tenacity and gumption to try and get that bid fully horizontal and off the floor. Um, Chris now setting up a zone of their own. Indeed, Ines Bringel with the fiery fakes. Working it nicely, no. Are we gonna see them get pinned? Some of the shots over the top haven't worked, the flat ones haven't. But are they gonna bring out some maybe upside down all around? Bringel looking downfield, oh my goodness. Getting a lot of contact there, calls the foul uncontested. Shame that Scalini did have the separation for sure on that chance at offense. The way these two handlers are moving, it's a nice display of how to fake meaningfully. Fake with intention, not just because. But again, Chris really managing to just contain. It's like they're in a glass case of emotion on the far side of the field. Going to need to find some options spread. There's no one on the near sideline. They're all so far away, she says, as Matthias trots across just in front of us. <laughs> I think she heard me, Ali. You cosmically linked. <laughs> Not a bad person to be cosmically linked to. Oh, and there goes Robin Fennig, finds Becky on the far sideline, sneaking away like a little ninja. Bringel. Back to Fennig. She's going to choose a risky biscuit, but it's Fennig, so it works. On the goal line, knocking on the doorstep, and there it is. 
another goal for Yaka, and they're putting themselves in charge again. This is so tense, Annie. I really don't know. I feel like there is absolutely no way of telling which team is going to come out on top. And I think a timeout is going to be called. I did not see which team uh, called it. Comments in the chat if you have the eagle eyes and were able to spot those hand signals. Oh, another look at that Scandalini bid. So sad. She was so close to it, but just not meant to be. <laughs> we're getting a dance in front of us right now from a uh, rather vivacious Clapham player who's looking very happy with himself, smug. Some might say smug. I would probably say smug. We're not, being, we're not even going to feature him. <laughs> we're not even going to turn the camera around. Although I'm not a big fan of being put on screen, Ali, but I did specifically wear, because we're doing women's finals today, I did specifically wear my Eurostar shirt, which says inspire women and girls worldwide, which is the kind of the ethos of the Eurostars campaign. And I think this game is well set to inspire women and girls worldwide that Ultimate is an amazing sport to play. Because this is an amazing game. This is an absolutely incredible game. And one thing that is such a, a facet of Ultimate that's so uh, incredible is the spirit. And I will say the spirit so far in this game has been really, really good. Lots of respectful discussions and retracted calls, all of those you know, good things we like to see. And so, seeing what's in front of us on the field, some, I think that was a dis defensive miscommunication there as the mark comes in. But a slight sagging off the hand of set, letting the resets go, pressuring the upfield, which is wise because the Italians have been doing a lot of isolation off the front of their vertical stack, a low one, but Pancotti brings it in, fakes the ripper, calls her teammates forward as she comes back for a little travel call there. For Gaia Pancotti with four goals on her oh stat Oh, my sheet. God. That was such a snatch out of the air. Pancotti. Oh, oh, my goodness. In this Brinchelle with the Brock. What a play. Now, that is going to fire this game up. Add a lock to the wood burner. The Portuguese is here. <laughs> and Mondial uh, choosing to maybe just uh, pour a little bit of water on that fire that's been ignited <laughs> and put it in the freezer to keep this Yaka side very calm because of course after an incredible play like that that gets everyone's adrenaline boosting everyone well I mean I say everyone I mean the French um, super excited and uh, playing when you're super excited can lead to um, you know Maybe, maybe not the best kind of calm clinical offense. So uh, gonna maybe start up a play here. This is an important point with the important break as we see. Well, we just saw inspirational oh. scenes. That's the other view of that. Oh my goodness, uh, grab. Out of nowhere, just yeah. sensational. So, so we see a little bit of colour there, some Salas bills with some silver round their neck. It does match the jerseys, it has to be said. Commiserations, well played in the final, but it was Hutz in the end. Although, of course, apologies if I've just spoiled <laughs> the game, if you're watching these back in uh, order. Because, of course, you're going to want to watch the women's final first, obviously. <laughs> But if you are watching this game live, then please do let us know where you're tuning in from in the comments. And we are indeed laughing at some of the, uh, the strange things that, we, that come into our brain. So apologies. So we're, uh, we're laughing at ourselves, certainly not the players on the field. Oh, no. When you have to talk for 90 minutes straight over several days, uh, your brain starts to do funny things. Looks like Yaka setting up in a fairly traditional horizontal look. Cusp trying to get a lot of poachers under and one deep. So Mondio looking at her options, finds Becke with zero pressure. Into Brinjel, 
who got the block and she's going to get the assist potentially. Oh, oh my goodness, flying through the air goes Paula Bass, but cannot come down with it. So that defensive look from Shout, they had one deep and three under, despite the disc being on the middle. Normally you see a poach on the, if the disc is on the far side, because that opposite side cutter is quite hard to hit. Um, so you were able to see Mondial just get off a, a floater to that poach player. But Cusp now on offense. And it's gonna be a high shot, but the players under it are the Italians. Potentially a, a travel call. Disc will go back. So off the arm of Frangipani. And uh, shout out to some of our global friends, Ali. Oh, excellent. We've got people tuning in from Malaysia, Hong Kong, Russia, Australia. And 1 a.m. in Sydney, props to you from watching uh, watching that. Ultimate fans all around the world watching this free coverage brought to you as we see Anna Cheski near sideline is going to fake the backhand. Pancotti to Frangipani. Yaka players letting them have the easy reset, but Paula Bass smacks it out of the ground. Pops up off that stress fractured foot. She didn't go down gracefully. I was worried for her ankles for a second, but up she popped again. And she goes immediately to the end zone, but that's a complete miscue there. That's um, a loss of balance from the Cusp defender. She pops up back out of the rubber crumb. Silvia Borghi getting in the way of Paula Bass and denying her a second bid. So the turnover will stand despite a little bit of a uh, little bit of discussion there. Well, both players fighting for the initial piece of it. Bass managing to stay on her feet, but uh, not really much you can do if you're Bodgi if you just fall over. <laughs> Very true. So the Italians with another chance here. They need to put one in to stem the bleeding as Yaka have gone three on the bounce. And it's a just a miscommunication. Two players coming together, bringing in Brinjel, and just putting enough pressure on. Easy initial pass to get us going. Bertin. Oh, and she's going to find Becke in the front corner, and that is another break for the French. Is it going to be their year? Are they finally going to grasp a gold medal? It's looking pretty good here, Ali. It certainly is, and it seems like they are getting more and more comfortable, more and more proficient at breaking through the cusp zone, the cusp defense, um, and they are incredibly hyped up right now, clapping and singing. A little bit of uh, jogging on the spot. And it looks like another timeout is going to be called. Well, you've got to. If you're cursed right now, you've got to, ha you've got to find something. You've got to interrupt the rhythm of this Yaka side. It's not been clean. That uh, break took two asks. Now, I, I'm afraid I misspoke. It looked like they were going to call a timeout because they all gathered on the field. But uh, <laughs> then they just walked off again. So ah, I wouldn't there we have go. hated a timeout call, um, you know, after going two breaks down. They're just so big and they're doing that thing that elite teams started doing maybe about five or ten years ago of crowding the field between every point, you know, that kind of like unified way, everyone hearing what the call is, what the plan is. Should we see another look at that Becky score? is of course very important that the whole team is on the same page with what the players on the field are doing it can be so key especially for the defense so the reigning champions currently on the field Chesky going to the knees pops back to Frangipani big deep cut available Ooh. but sinks it through sneaking Cyber, it's going to be a pick upfield. field. 
Some very vocal uh, French voices directing the defense. This is nice movement now, just chipping away at the distance of the goal line. Seibert fakes off Lagala. Not available this time, Chesky, but coming through, it's Helle Rovang. The Danish player for this French, no, Italian side even, and that's going to come straight away and coming through. Chesky throws herself at it, but to no avail. That's Fenning for days. And the Italian's a little bit on the back foot here, but Scazzieri coming in and applying the pressure eventually. Meisel, the Austrian. De Laval holstered on the far side, but there's a call on the field. She'll pause this for a moment. I think a pick, although no more hand signals are forthcoming. There's just a bit of discussion about what the stall should be coming in on. It's a high one. It's going to sail over Meisel. Oh. oh, nearly with the hero bid. Audrey Chant not able to pick up the trash. The Italians have it back to try and get this hole, try and interrupt the flow of the Yaka machine. And uh, Michon's going to have a little discussion <laughs> with Francesco Florenti. To get back underway. So it's nice flow from the Italians. They do have options available under, but largely on the break side. And there is just the fingertip, the touch from Clara Matias. Just such a slight uh, contact with it that she had, but enough to tip it out of the out of the path, and that is going to be a timeout call by Yaka. Yeah, this one for sure. Like you said before, you didn't know who'd called the timeout, but this one nice and clear. And uh, there's a lot of French going on in the chat. I think it's because I'm looking at the uh, French YouTube stream, so that might explain that. <laughs> Indeed, multiple channels of commentary language available to you. You have some French, you have some German, and us here in English, with uh, the Australians getting rowdy in the comments. Behave yourselves. <laughs> But all good fun and games. No, we really are very glad to have you with us as we watch back some of the highlights of this marathon point. Currently at how many turnovers apiece? Our stats man, Sean, with the knowledge. Two to one. So break opportunity again for Yaka in this second half. They have looked pretty good setting up from static and uh, being able to get the disc moving. They are perfectly happy to grind it under and to third deep shots as we get another look at that incredible D on the replay. <coughs> so we're getting some suggestions on our comments, Ali, that both teams are playing through quite short rosters, even though there's depth for days in the squads, as we certainly saw, as we said, against the matchups with Valkyria, two of those for Kusp Shout, the players in black. Uh, a point Valkyria did have to resort to the Sarah Eklund show, <laughs> which I'm always a fan of. Anyone not familiar with, familiar with Sarah Eklund, where have you been for the past 10 years? But we shan't looking a little bit lost for options. Going to have to throw it and hope. Oh, you can see there, Meisel wasn't able to make the full layout, but um, a bit of a winding there from the rubber crumb. That looks like it hurts. And we can see both teams, the women on both these teams, giving absolutely everything that they have got to try and keep possession or snatch possession away from the opposition as some of the Yaka players are going to jog over just to make sure that she's all right. Well, another injury stoppage. The last one, thankfully, Ali didn't seem to cause too many problems. This time, it's the French 
that are losing one of their key targets. So that's the number 29, De Laval, coming off the field, Jean. Oh, yeah, it looks like she comes down quite heavily on that elbow, which is, looks like it's already in a sleeve, potentially uh, with some taping underneath. That's pure conjecture, by the way. I've no idea if she has anything wrong with her elbow previously. Well, it's the end of the season. It's October, it's autumn, hence the weather that's been howling a ghoulie. And Frangipani as the sun just saunters over the fields. It's nice to see a little bit of break from the cloudy overcast conditions here, allowing these athletes to show us just how excellent they are. Frangipani. Tossing it up to Legala. Very physical player, Legala. Carmen Legala, very useful in their semi final. Haven't had much duty on the field here, but that is a block for Alexia Chassigno. She says Chassigno. Oh, very nice, very nice. <laughs> we love a pun. We love a pun on this commentary stream. Uh, question from the chat. Um, there is, I would say, next to no wind. Currently, some of these uh, Eurodisc flags are barely moving at all. They're being but caressed. The wind has completely dropped in the second half. And you know what's really interesting? It's dropped and Yaka have woken up. They are firing and that is a heck of a read under pressure. Can it be another one on the board for the French. It pops in and Fennig makes just enough distance. Little head spike there <laughs> from the American. <laughs> and what a connection to have on the field. Mondio, absolute incredible handler. And Fennig, not a bad handler herself, but also such a credible and just a receiver to die for to have on your team. I'm speaking from a, you know, playing relatively low level mixed in London. Having having a, a Robin Fennig-esque player, it, it just would seem like a pipe dream. <laughs> well, I don't know, you know, maybe if you invite her over, build it and she will come or they will come. There are obviously lots of players out here on the fields that are as talented as Fennig and in different ways as well. That I think we've really got such a well-rounded set of players in front of us to enjoy some big throwers, some big receivers. Although at the moment, it seems to be the creativity, I think, that has an edge here. I think so, too. We haven't seen um, too much spice from Shout. They are certainly capable of it, but I'm wondering if um, there's maybe a bit of an element of this is the final and we are taking this seriously, which is not necessarily, you know, those, uh, those more unconventional throws. They do have a place, especially when the conditions are still. So four breaks straight out into this second half for the Yaka players. Chris needs to find some magic now. Oh, and it's not, it's Nanu with the block and LeBorn coming in and putting themselves. They're so dominant right now. LeBorn looked so casual getting that run through D. She just carried on jogging as if she just swiped her card on a bus and was just, yep. This is where, that's where I'm going. To be fair, I know for a fact that she is an uber athlete. Most of the players out here on the fields are, you know, in great shape, but Nanu just does so much. I think she can do like headstand push up, no, handstand push ups. Oh, cramps. Yeah, one, one of those under lockdown doing the challenges of taking all of your clothes off whilst, and, oh no, putting clothes on, sorry, <laughs> whilst in a handstand. And that is the goal for Paula Bass, but possibly a call. Signals of score, but um, big bid from Scazzieri, the elder. She signals the score. And Yaka are over the moon. Well, <laughs> is it any wonder, Ali? That was just something else. Block from Le Boyne and then the layout score from Bass. And after a very lengthy defensive conversion. We see a much more rapid one. And Cusp have not scored since taking half. So yep. since we have had half, 
Yaka have been bageling Shout and so show no signs of letting up. So we saw Yaka do this in their game against Love. They the did. Belgians. They absolutely did. On this field yesterday, Love were able to hang tough, really fight in it, give Yaka a good game. 3SB in the quarterfinal after the weather changed them and made the power pool format go straight to quarterfinals. They did feel a wee bit robbed of having their quarter against Yaka. Such a strong team, they had a score on a 15-11, but with the love game, they came out in the second half and just silenced them. And that is what Yaka are doing now. They've got a big old fluffy cushion and they've just popped it on top of the Italians' offense and just, just, just sat pretty on top of it. And that's why they have the buffer of four points in this women's final. Cheski, though, is going to have something to say about that. And it is a lasery flick, but that is sitting and hanging underneath it, though, with the read. The travel's going to bring it back, but that was a lovely piece of offense from Cecilia Scaglierini. Yeah. Uh Chesky doesn't necessarily look, uh, I mean, as well, she might not look very happy about it. Um, I think just a, a potential change of direction as she uh, caught the disc is going to bring it back. So we'll see it here. Yeah, she does. She, I mean, I'm not a fan of travel calls in general, but she did take uh, quite a few steps to slow down. but not finding much in the way of options upfield, but in comes Pancotti from the deep space. She's going to laser a flat one. Oh, and the layout is great to look at, but doesn't manage to get a score. A helpful uh, person on the sideline putting the cone back for us. Very important to have cones on all sides of the field. Kicking cones out of the way when establishing a pivot at the front corner of the end zone. Fan or no fan, Ali? absolutely my least favorite thing mm -hmm. you need to establish your pivot on the pier on the field and the line is not a part of the field <laughs> on the line is out but that is going to be taken out of the sky Anna Chesky you thief <laughs> oh no but back to oh, yes <laughs> And Anna Czeski goes down against Robin Fennig. Oh, Anna Czeski, hopefully she is okay. That I would mean, be a huge loss. I mean, <laughs> we saw the Italian women's national team who had so many of these Chris players struggle to come back into it after an incredible quarter final against the German women's team. Struggled after losing some players to injury. We do see Chesky there up off of the field. Very good to see. So glad. I think she's just winded herself. Woof. She certainly did hit the floor with a bit of a thump. But the Italians have had so many injuries. Farolfi out with a broken foot a couple of days ago, well, like weeks ago. She's on the sideline with her uh, Crutches. <laughs> Her crutches that she's using as an instrument. Oh my goodness. Robin Fennick inches away. How did Chesky manage to hold on to that? Oh, potentially a foul call, maybe. It's uh, <laughs> giving her the possession. <laughs> oh no, she came down with it. She had it in her clutches when she hit the floor hard. But oh my goodness, she's staying out there, Ali. Takes a little injury stoppage and remains on the field. But of course, she needs to do 8 12. Deficit of four points. It's a mountain staring up at it. Oh, squeezing oh. it far side. Arcazzini, having had some time off, makes a miscue. This is the thing. Seeing players coming in that have been sat on the sidelines for a while, maybe closing down those lines so early wasn't such a good idea. But it's going to be Chassigno. As Mondio on the around is going to have to work hard though to try and get away from her defender. Foul call, perhaps a bit of a fortunate one there. So I'll just see the replay here. 
That's uh, yeah, that's a little bit of a, a little bit of a bump from uh, Frangipane coming in for a little kiss. Yeah. New keys? Hello, <laughs> honey. New keys? <laughs> afterwards, afterwards. <laughs> oh, I'm having a great time watching this game. We hope you Ooh. are two and all. My word. Meisel trying to get the bid over the pack. But there is going to be a call, so we'll see what the discussion is. This is a slightly exasperated uh, reaction. From that number seven shirt, Marcassini. And we've got a couple of people on the sideline coming over potentially to translate or to uh, offer their perspective. I, could, I do like the position of the spirit captain, having someone who's in charge of being that one voice, a bit of objectivity. As you say, translations can be useful. So just not able to see it on that angle. That's a fantastic bid to try and save it too. Yeah, Katarina Meisel there with the attempt, but it's coming back off the foul call. Fennig now looking at her options, doesn't really like the look of any of them. It's going to be a have a high whisk. Oh, over the top. What a golden throw that was to open up the space, but a pick. Going to bring the score back. That break, I mean, there is a, a height difference between Chesky and Mondial, and she just managed to pop the disc straight up and over and then back down. It's a really perfect throw. We do love some outdoorsy, indoorsy type play on the field here. And I have had to say, it, it's been really nice to see the overheads more used as we see one going up for Robin Fennig, who snaffles the biscuit <laughs> and puts another one in the jar for her team. There's a lot of cookies in that stack. Now five points clear. It is wide open for Yaka. They can see that medal dangling, <laughs> dangling away. That's six points on the trot. And that one only took two times to do it. Oh, so an, uh, a, another pseudo timeout from uh, Shout. Oh, this is a timeout. There's a real timeout. There we go. They just uh, didn't quite communicate that to Yaka before circling up. So Yaka with only two points, and we can see Davide Marie there in the stack, um, gesticulating, uh, exhorting his players, um, and uh, getting a round of applause for his advice. Well, and we're also getting lots of support on the chat in the live stream for the CUSP side. They are so quality at the moment. It looks like it may be out of reach. It may be all over, but do not put anything past these feisty Italian athletes. As I said, so many of them appear on the national side in the women's division. Did you manage to see their game against the Germans back in 2019 in Gyur, Ali? That was my that was my year off frisbee. I, I did not consume much frisbee media, I it's, must say. It's good to take breaks. It is unfortunately behind a paywall, but it's worth every penny for one month's worth of fancy subscription just to see that game. I had to lie down in the stands <laughs> for about 15 minutes afterwards because the Italians staged a comeback led, to be fair, by Laura, Falof Laura Forolfi, the talismanic player for the Kuss side. But they have some big household names still on their roster. They are very, very capable and they are looking good. It's just Yaka looking a little bit better. But have they got their tickets to the comeback train? Chat thinks they do. <laughs> but do they believe it themselves? Um, also, just a shout out to the chat. Thank you very much for um, holding each other accountable and keeping it respectful. We really, really appreciate uh, seeing that. Thank you very much. Frangipane there, the key handler for this cusp offense. Just putting her foot on the path that leads up this big mountain they will have to climb. Well, there's some pretty good mountains in Italy, so I'm sure they're good at 
doing that. Legala, oh, she hesitates far too long. <laughs> and Janina closes the door, slams it in her face. They, they can do quick turns, Yaka, but it seems like they do prefer to take their time and set up as a huge one goes deep. Becky has it in her grasp, and it's a goal! My goodness, Elise Becky, you legend! <laughs> Insane. Unbelievable, incredible. There are not enough adjectives to describe that layout. Oh my word, Annie. So, look at that body language. The Yaka side, the shirts of red, Le Rouge. We're not Allez Le Bleu today, we're Allez Le Rouge. And that is going to be game to 15. We're going to hit the soft cap as the time cap. But as much as Yaka have shown their class in this second half, they are completely unanswered. So this would be an almost exact mirror of their game against Love, bageling the second half. Mm -hmm. And they just look so dominant and crisp, do not seem to have any answers. They really don't. It's just pure fire all over the field. Legala had that hesitation. You know, she looked at the disc too long. She needed to go up early and aggressive. But we know that the Italians can play some absolutely fantastic defense. So, the <laughs> gauntlet has been thrown. This is Yakas to lose at this point. They only need one more. Can it be from the D-line or are they gonna have to have the O? It is also worth mentioning at this point um, that in their game against Cosmic, they were down 11-10, scored a hold and then four breaks. But there is the turnover. Cecilia Scaglierini cannot do anything but watch the disc bounce around in the rubber crumb in front of her. And it's going to be Alexia Chassigno getting us underway. Nice lot of view there of our camera person. Chips doing it for a bit of visibility. Love to see it. Chassigno looks around, has Bass in the center. Trying to get free but failing. Sorrenti putting on the massive pressure. Robin Fenning now coming in. Popping in front. Kovang, sorry, Knudsen even, the other Dane. <laughs> Kovang, of course, playing for the Cusp side. Kovang actually having dislocated her shoulder early in the tournament, but she has been playing in this game. Nice to see her out there. Pick call upfield as both sides need to use every bit of energy they have to claw at each other. This shout defense is so fiery. You can really feel their determination to not have this be the last point. Will it be enough? Oh, I'd be more than happy to get a few more <laughs> of this beautiful women's final. Knudsen pops it up. Dabin, not seen her so much on the field for Yaka, but into Fennig it goes. It's so close, Paula Bass puts it up, and that's gonna be Meisel underneath it. Can they do it? Is it gonna be this moment that they finally get the gold medal, Paula Bass? The player from the Netherlands pops to Meisel. She's gonna go for it. It's gonna <gasps> sail over the top. It's not then. But that looked great until it just sailed over the fingertips of Matthias and Kusp managed to hold on. They put pressure on. They made Yaka work for it, but see, Yaka are going to try everything they can. Knudsen on the mark. Seibert rips open the field with a huge sinking backhand. Mysel though underneath it with the grab. Oh, oh. But immediate miscommunications. Oh my Lord. 
<laughs> okay, the pressure is getting to everybody as we see Hella Horvang there, the number 15 that I spoke about the other Dane. Two Danes on the field, but you love to see it for a French and Italian club side. But that's again miscommunication, huge bid. And great work actually from Marcassini staying out of the way. Not coming in too hard, just allowing the turnover to happen. Sorrenti into Ceschi. This Kuss line needs to make it happen here. Scazzieri. Nice switching there, nearly coming in for the tip off. Chassigno, but that is a goal, Leona Siebert. Finally, the Cusp players respond and put their first point on the board since we started the second half. Ali, now we have potentially the start of a spicy, spicy comeback. At the moment, Yaka have put six padlocks on the cupboard. And each one of them, to unlock that medal, they're going to have to pull out a safety pin or some kind of metal implement and try and pick the lock. It's a puzzle. Their D-line's going to have to come out with fieriness and intensity. Mm. But it's, as David Amorio says, the wind is an equation. You just have to solve it. But this is a puzzle for this Italian. How much can they bring to the table right now? I would argue it's not necessarily as calm and rational as a puzzle. I think there's a giant which has a key for each of those padlocks. And Ooh. to get the key, they need to take <laughs> down a giant and uh, unlock the cupboard which contains that medal. So just to impinge on your metaphor there. Is it maybe? It's a puzzle box, but what they're going to do is they're going to take the puzzle box, they're going <laughs> to take it above their heads, and they're just going to find a giant rock and smash it <laughs> onto the rock. I don't know what metaphor we're using anymore. All I know is that I am excited to see what happens. Can the Cusp D-line snag another one off of the French, or are they going to stumble here and allow this slick Yaka offense to work. It's been the D-line doing the duty and it's a hand block. No call from Inesh Brinjel. What amazing spirit. Oh, this is exciting. An incredible bid from Pancotti who is now walking over to the disc. Gaia Pancotti, so good all game long. <laughs> Ceski there, I'm available. You can reset the stall with me, Scazzieri. Fine, sir. Oh, but an overshot from Ceski cannot connect with Pancotti. She has been playing, I think, a, a majority of the points in this game. Obviously, in, an incredibly well conditioned athlete, but this game has now been going for over 100 minutes, and everybody must be a little bit tired by now. Mondio. A little bit lost for options. This is top defense. Hovang <laughs> there coming in and taking a lot of lag from Paula Bus. Lovely around Mondio, nice and easy. Finds Brinjel. The two having played so well together in the Eurostar side in 2019. Brinjel has a little look at it. Paula Bas working hard. Now it's Becket at the front, isolated in the space. Mondio. The creative throw and sneaks one in, and it's Nanu for the goal! Yaka take home their first ever women's gold medal, and it is in delightful style. Le Bon puts the flag on the map for the French, and you can see that was so delightful. What a second half! Absolutely incredible scenes here in Bruges. What an understated way to take the win. You would not have known that that was a championship point for them. They just looked calm, cool, collected the same way they have throughout this entire game and just freezing through Shout's fiery passion to take their first gold at Euros. Congratulations to Yaka. Commiserations to Kusp. They fought admirably in the early stages of the game. They came out with the first break. They would look so strong, but they just 
couldn't find an answer to the questions that Yaka were posing in the second half. And it was just too much to be handled. The fire, the intensity, inspirational scenes. As we wrap up the extended European Ultimate Championship Finals, Ali, what would be your closing thought on this entire tournament experience? I think it's so amazing to see all of these incredibly elite, high-level teams come back and play this tournament after all of the, you know, the, the stuff that happened over the last few years. I heard, you know, some, some things happened internationally that, you know, weren't great. Um, so, Understatement of so, the century. So to, so to see these incredible teams come out and fight in a tournament they've not been able to play um, and to demonstrate that athletes of this caliber can have an extended time off and still come out having maybe only had a few months together due to restrictions and look this good. We've seen some incredible, incredible ultimate here. And I think ultimate in Europe is, it has been on the, on the up for ages and it's still getting even better. Oh, it certainly is, Ali. You see Senoisi this year, it is indeed the athletes from Oisille Sec who are gonna take home not a dirty gold, so many bronzes and finally, 2021, the post-pandemic era. It is finally a gold. Thank you so much for joining us on this live stream. Ulti.tv coverage, bringing you free streams on YouTube as much as we can, whenever we can, as many fields as we can. If you want to support us, please do consider becoming a patron of Ultimate Coverage. We really need your support to keep these games free so we can increase visibility and grow the sport. But it has been an absolute pleasure to chaperone you through this women's final match here in Bruges, closing the tournament. Thank you so much to all of the staff keeping us dry, feeding us, bringing us coffee, to everybody working, the Frisbees, the tournament organizers, but most of all, thank you so much to every single person who has gotten themselves through all of the restrictions to be here on the fields. We'd be nothing without you. It's our pleasure, myself, Hannah Pendlebury. And also me, Ali Thomas. It's been real, and we'll see you again at the next one. TV.